Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you as we gather here at Zion Lutheran Church on this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Today's theme of our worship is Jesus, my light and my hope. So let us rise as we begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. Amen. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. Let us now make confession to our merciful Father in heaven. O oh God, our Holy Father, we admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, in thought and in word and in deed. We confess that we have not lived lives that are holy and have not shaped all our actions so that they are in accord with your commands. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation. We confess that we have not always been defenders of the weak and helpless. We confess that we have not used every opportunity given to us to witness to the faith that is ours and to let and have let, let the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh set the agendas for our lives and actions. Have mercy on us and forgive us, O Lord. Upon this, your confession, and by the command of our Lord Jesus, I, a called and ordained servant of Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, keep your family, the church, 
continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray for the power to interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say, Amen, to your thanksgiving? when he does not know what you are saying. For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil. But in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. 
for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the first article of the creed, our confession is focused on God, our creator, who is completely holy. It is the blessed work of God the Father to give us life, direct the plan of our span of days, and preserve us throughout our earthly journey. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The words of our text are recorded in Luke chapter 5, verse 10, where Jesus says to Simon Peter, Do not be afraid. There's a woman named Tori Forbes. I was, saw her on a video sometime. She was driving in, I believe it was Delaware, she was approaching the Delaware Memorial Bridge when suddenly her hands began to shake and she began to cry and she was having a panic attack and she had to stop her car. And she stopped her car in a place where she was really in danger, blocking people. But what happened is she, she has something called jephyrophobia. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but it's fear of bridges. And whenever she's approaching a bridge, 
she gets into a panic attack. She shakes and cries and, and uh, just, she's crippled, she can't do anything. On that occasion, she did get help from the police who managed to protect her and, and help her drive over the bridge. But this is the condition that she has. You know, she's greatly and terribly afraid of bridges. I wonder if you have any fears. Somebody put this note on, on the altar. Hyrophobia. Fear of pastors. <laughs> Thank you, whoever did. I knew a, a, a teenager once. I don't want to say names, but they happened to be terribly afraid of the Easter Bunny. And when somebody had the Easter Bunny costume on, they could not be in the same location. And sometimes people laugh about it, but it's not a laughing matter to someone who is greatly afraid. I went online and I found one site that put down 544 phobias. Didn't know there was that many things to be afraid of, but yes, there are. You might know a couple of them. Claustrophobia, right? Fear of tight places. Arachnophobia. Spiders. Yeah, you saw the movie too. <laughs> yeah. I found out last night that I have a son who both of those affect him, okay? I know a member of our church, a grown man, who is terribly afraid of spiders. Here's one. Coolrophobia, fear of clowns. I, when I was in elementary school, there was a, a kid in school who had agoraphobia, fear of crowds, and he ended up having to leave school and be homeschooled because crowds and people just frightened him. Just amazing. Uh, here's one, homilophobia, homilophobia. Fear of sermons. If you have that, uh, just relax. It'll be okay. Okay. Um, I have a couple of other ones. Uh, how about this one? Vaccinophobia. Fear of vaccination. Or pathophobia. Fear of disease. Monopathophobia. Fear of a specific disease such as COVID-19. Or this one, taponophobia, fear of being contagious. Here's one that you probably never heard of. Hippopotomonstrosis quipedaliophobia. It's got 35 letters in it, okay? I'll do it again. Hippopotomonstrosis quipedaliophobia. Believe it or not, it's fear of long words. <laughs> One of the longest words in our dictionary. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of phobias out there, but you know, out of all the list, there is one I did not find on the list. Fear of Jesus. And that's what Simon had, Simon Peter. He was greatly terrified at that moment of Jesus after the nets began to be full of fish, breaking the nets. nets. Uh, they were getting the fish in the boats, and both boats began sinking. And Simon just went down at Jesus' knees, and he says, Depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. You know, it wasn't so much Jesus, that, but the fact that Simon recognized in that moment his sins. Because he was in the presence of the Holy One of God. And when you're in the presence of Holy, the Holy One, you are reminded of your failures and, and how you don't measure up. And so Peter was so, you know, petrified at that moment, because, much like Isaiah in the first lesson. And so he fell on his knees and depart from me. He was afraid. And what does Jesus say? Do not be afraid. And ever notice that those words 
can be meaningless to someone with no fear. You know, you can tell somebody, hey, guess what? Dinner's ready. But they're not interested because they've been picking out on candy all afternoon. They're not hungry. But if somebody's hungry and you say it's time for lunch or something, those words are music to your ears. And for Peter, Jesus doesn't tell him your sins are forgiven. He says, don't be afraid. Coming from the words of the Holy One of God, do not be afraid. We need to hear those words too. Because sometimes we deal with our own phobias in life. We have fears of our own. We look at things going on in the news and we wonder, how does this impact me? Some people are afraid to go outside. They see some of the violence happening. They don't want to deal with it. Some people are afraid to go to stores for fear they might catch something. Some people are crippled with their fears where they don't even want to move. And sometimes in our spiritual lives, we recognize how we don't always live the way God expects us to do, and we can, we can become very fearful. I've heard people say, Pastor, I can't come to church because the roof is going to fall in. No, it's not. It's really built fine. But that's a reason why they don't want to, they have fear. They're afraid that they might see something in the Word that might convict them forever and ever. Or maybe they might learn something about themselves that they just don't want to accept. And so they want to stay where their comfort zone is at. Let's not drive over bridges. Let's not, not hear any sermons. Let's not come in contact with the pastor. He might say a long word that we've never heard before. Jesus once said, don't be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. See, Jesus is bigger than that. He's more powerful than any, anything. We don't have to live in fear. The only one we need to deal with is our God. Jesus said, fear of him who has the power to destroy both body and soul in hell. Luther began every commandment by saying we should fear and love God. The first commandment, we should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And a healthy fear in God is a good thing because it recognizes his power and authority. But we just don't live in fear of God. We love him too. And we trust in him. And what we find in Jesus is a source of that love that, that casts out all fear. St. John once wrote in his first letter, chapter 4, By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also we are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Jesus is a source who can cast out whatever fears you may struggle with. And there are times when you will be confronted with the very things you fear the most. And in those moments, I am sure that you will have that dread, have that sense of anguish. I think those are times where we kneel before the Lord and we hear his words again. Do not be afraid, because Jesus is bigger than your greatest fears in your life. And by his own suffering, death, and resurrection, he has conquered the greatest things that can hurt you. He's brought life and immortality to light. By his death, all of your sins are forgiven. 
we have peace with God. And we can live in that sense of confidence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The flowers on the altar are given by Deborah Morrow in honor of the birthdays of Michelle and her sister. Also, the eternal light is lit by Deborah Morrow in memory of Mary, Claire, and George. In our prayers, we pray for those under the doctor's care, for Kathy, Linda, Richard, and Kaylee. Susan Brady requested prayers for Russ, who is back in the hospital, and for healing and strength for Marguerite. Judy Kirchstein requested prayers for Tammy, who is recovering from surgery. Corinne Leary requested prayers for her friends who have lost a loved one. Judy Robinson requested a prayer for her son-in-law, Fred, who is receiving a second chemotherapy this past week. Susan Cosgrove requested continued prayers for the Weinstock family at the loss of their baby. Karen Persinowski requested a prayer for healing for her nephew, Barry, who fell off the roof removing snow. He is in the hospital for broken vertebrae. And Jan Kirby requested a prayer for the family of Lillian Cook, who died this past week. And we also pray for Al, who is still being treated for cancer. Let us rise as we continue in prayer. O Lord God of hosts, build up your church and manifest your spirit among us with wisdom, knowledge, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may be mature in our thinking and infants in evil. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all Christian homes that your word would be sown and produce much fruit. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, give healing to the sick, strength to the weak, peace to the afflicted, and comfort to those who mourn. We especially bring to you, O oh Lord, those we have named here before you today, as well as those who are in our hearts and on our minds. Lord, in your mercy. And send from your altar, O oh Lord, the body and blood of Christ. Cleanse us and our lips by this blessed sacrament, delivering the atonement Christ is one for us, that we may be worthy to stand before you now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, never depart from us. Let your word rule us and your spirit revive us to leave behind pride and anxiety alike, that we may follow you in all we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and our delight at all times and in all places to give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now do we praise you that you did send to us your only begotten Son, that in him, being found in human form, you did manifest the brightness of your glory, through whom, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you for your great majesty.
Holy are you, O God. With thanksgiving and praise, we bless you for having sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to give himself as a perfect sacrifice so that our lives may know that true peace and joy as we grow in faithfulness and in holiness of living. Invited by your grace, we come to your table with thankful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood that we may live lives of confident faith, securely awaiting the eternal feast with all the saints in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of your Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. God's peace is with you. Go in his peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Let us rise. And let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for having fed us with the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby that we are truly members of his body, the church. And we ask you to help us by your Holy Spirit that we may continue in this fellowship and do the good works that you desire us to do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the same Spirit be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you. Amen. Amen.